Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Check this out. The other day, Republican lawmakers in West Virginia voted against the passage of the Crown Act which would have banned hair discrimination in the state. In recent years, more than 20 states have passed the Crown Act in order to prohibit discrimination against certain hairstyles and textures that are usually associated with a particular race of people. And you know who that is. When discussing West Virginia's failure to pass the law, Democratic Senator Mike Caputo said, We hear horror stories all the time about how particularly women of color are treated differently because of their hairstyle, their natural hairstyle, or their traditional hairstyles. We need to move forward in America, not backwards. It's a shame we're still having discussions like that. It's a shame that in West Virginia, we can't at least do that much. Listen, I don't even understand why we need laws about this. Because what white people need to understand is that our hair texture and curl pattern is different than yours. So, you just gotta deal with it. Because the bottom line is this. The same way that you can jump out of bed, comb, shake, and go, we should be able to get out of bed, comb, shake, and go. Because we should be able to rock our hair the way that God made our hair. And besides that, who are you guys to be like the arbiter of hairstyles? When half of your women are still running around with the 1980s Sally Forth like Bob and half of your dudes are still running around here with mullets. I mean, that should be banned from the workplace. <laughs> Listen, I bet you, if the world was to turn upside down tomorrow and every white person woke up, but they had black hair textures, by like tomorrow afternoon, every state would have a crown act. <laughs> Either that or they'd all be coming to work with do rags and bonnets on. <laughs> <laughs> boy, if I could snap my fingers. And now that I'm thinking about it, your boy Trump went to work every day in the White House leading the free world with a freaking bird's nest on the top of his head that was combed to the side and y'all ain't say ish. <laughs> Listen, if he could come to work with that hair, y'all can't talk about nobody's hair. Now, check this out. Can somebody please tell Beyonce that I'm willing to rock with her on the country album, but what I'm not willing to do is rock with her with like these Adidas country sweatsuits. That is an absolute no. And even though you put your cute little baby in the ad, it's still a no. You're not going to have us running around in these streets looking crazy with Adidas denim and velour cowboy sweatsuits with big buckle belts and Adidas cowboy hats. Absolutely not. That's where I'm going to have to draw the line. <laughs> I swear, you give the Carters an inch and they try to take a mile. Now, really quick, I'm going to ask you a question because I like to find out about my audience. And this question is going to tell me a lot. Back in the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, when you used to go to school and they used to give you those square pizzas, was pizza day your favorite day to go to school or your worst day? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And I know, somebody's going to come in the comment section like, Yo, Sauce, my favorite day to go to school was the day when they were serving the tater tots. <laughs> Not the tater tots. <laughs> wow. All right, on to the next story. On Wednesday, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a bill that could eventually lead to the banning of TikTok in America because the House passed a bill that ordered TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, to sell its controlling stake in the app or face being banned from the American market because ByteDance has long been accused of being in cahoots with the Chinese government. Now, as soon as word dropped that America might be dropping TikTok, Big Draco, aka Soldier Boy, jumped online and said, look everybody, I'm sorry, but I'm the reason why America is trying to ban TikTok. After that, Soldier Boy put up a screenshot of how much he made on TikTok in one day, and he showed that he made $32,183.77, and he believes that after they saw how much money he made in one day, America was like, oop, oop, no. Nope, nope, nope. We got to shut this down. <laughs> All right, people. So apparently, America wants to shut down TikTok, not because there's a potential threat from a foreign country like China, who's potentially getting all of our information through the app, but instead, because Soldier Boy made $32,000. <laughs> wow. I'd like to ask Soldier Boy, if it was all about the money, then how come they're shutting down TikTok and not YouTube? Because Shannon Sharp made a couple of million dollars. 
<laughs> but you know what? Let's not tell Soldier Boy that because we don't want to burst his bubble. And I really think that Soldier Boy needs his bubble. But while we're talking about people busting people's bubble, the other day Kanye West jumped online to call out Adidas because he says even though they dropped him due to their morality clause, Adidas are actually the ones that lack the scruples and the morals. Check out what Ye had to say. Yo, Adidas, y'all tried to destroy me. And now we got the number one song in the world. And you out here, when I was there, y'all was stealing my ideas and putting in your company. Then you dismantled my creative team. Then you started making fake colorways. Then you paid off my lawyers. while I was with you. Then you dropped me on a morality clause, even though y'all was the ones stealing my designs. Then you got the CEO coming up to me talking about, are we just gonna burn the product? Saying that directly to my face. Now y'all putting out product with my name on it. Y'all got y'all 60 years of contracts or y'all 60 years of business experience to come in and take advantage of an artist. But I ain't laying, I'm just not laying back and watch you take, just take, it's not even the principles, not that I can't get money somewhere else. Y'all using my name, y'all using my designs in 2024. Y'all doing this. Listen, I feel Kanye, and I hate the fact that Kanye is getting hoodwinked and bamboozled by Adidas. Because if Adidas didn't really want to have anything to do with Ye, Adidas shouldn't have anything to do with Ye. Why are you still out here selling Yeezys? If you as a company was so offended by Kanye's like I love Hitler rant, then you should not be selling those sneakers or any other product related to Kanye, including anything that he designed before he left. But what Kanye and some of these other young artists need to understand is that these companies are not your friend. This is a capitalistic system and all these companies want to do is use you and everything that you bring to the table until you're all used up and then they're ready to move on to the next best thing. Which is why Kanye and other artists need to understand that when you get a little money in your pocket, you got to start your own thing from scratch. Because I'm telling you, Kanye didn't need Adidas. Adidas needed Kanye. And if Kanye really wanted to be in the sneaker business, Kanye should have started his own sneaker company. But the problem is this, a lot of black artists, instead of like looking for ownership, they're settling for partnerships. And that's how they're getting caught up in this sharecropping system. And let me see if I can explain this using the music industry as an example. Hip hop started 50 years ago based on the creativity that spawned out of the souls of black folks in the Bronx. And today, I think it would be fair to say that over 99% of almost all successful rap artists are black. However, despite rap being created and fueled by black culture, we don't own not one major record label. Not even Bad Boy, Motown, Aftermath, G-Unit, Def Jam, T.I.'s, Grand Hustle, none of them. Because all of the major record labels, even the ones that you think are black, are subsidiaries of the three major record labels, Universal, Sony, and Warner. Which means that the majority of the hip hop music that you hear today is owned by white companies that are run by the following three white men. Sir Lucian Grange, Robert Stringer, and Simon Robson. Now, if these three white men run the white companies that own the music, who's really running hip hop? So, similar to sharecropping in the 1800s, they own the land, but they're giving artists like Kanye a piece of it to work. And they're expecting for a high yield in return. And if they don't get what they want, they don't have any problem snatching that plot of land from under you. Which is why we got to think in terms of ownership. Because it makes no sense that we as black people created hip hop, we fuel hip hop, but yet we don't own any major record labels. 
So I'm saying all of this to say that artists like Kanye really need to start thinking in terms of ownership instead of partnership or else they're always going to be indentured servants to companies like Adidas that can fire them and steal their ish whenever they want to. Now check this out. The other day a YouTuber jumped online and she posted a video entitled Why Jay-Z Cheated on Beyonce and in the video she came to the conclusion that the reason why Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce is is because Beyonce was never Jay-Z's dream girl. Check this out. It's probably gonna piss off a lot of people, but I'm gonna say it. Beyonce is not Jay-Z's dream girl, which is ironic because she actually was a dream girl. But I don't say this to knock Beyonce in any way, shape, or form. Because Beyonce is probably a lot of people's dream girl, but Beyonce is not Jay-Z's dream girl. But Beyonce fits the image of who Jay-Z thinks that someone at his level in music as a major executive in music should be with because she is the queen. She is the queen-like energy. She is this regal queen-like wife that is by his side. But that's not the woman that he really wants, which is why he's, we know he's cheated on her. I mean, there's been albums about it at this point. And we don't know specifically who he's cheated with, but my guess is he's probably cheating with women who are are more his type because Beyonce is not his type. She fits the image of who he thinks that a powerful music executive should be with. Okay, so after she said that Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce because Beyonce is not his dream girl, a whole bunch of people responded and shared their own thoughts on the situation. I want to let you know that men put women into different categories and it's not the simplistic the wifey material, not wifey material categories. There are five categories that men put women into and I wanted to share those with you so that you understand kind of what's what, okay? So the first category is the desperate girl and the desperate girl is all the girl that's chasing, emailing him, texting him trying to earn his love. Category number two is the good time girl. This is the girl that he hooks up with. Oftentimes these are the girls that he doesn't want to be seen in public with. No shade, but if you're a darker skinned girl, if you're a curvier girl, and if you're a trans girl, sometimes some of these guys will try to put you in the box, so don't let them do that. The third category is the good enough girl. The fourth category is the dream girl category. So the difference between dream girl and the kind of good enough category is the dream girl he loves the whole package and he's gonna do the little stuff in between the random flowers right he's going to take care of things without you asking him to do so um, the, the thing that you have to be aware of and this is the category that you want to be in is you want to make sure that you're not performing a lot of girls will be in this dream girl category and he, he will want to do all of these things for you but then you feel like oh my god I have to be some some this like curated version of myself and not my real self don't do that girl yeah the fifth category and I actually think that this is the category that Jay-Z and Beyonce are in is the out of your lead category um, and this is where the woman comes from wealth more education um, has a bigger job or prestige than the guy and he's doing everything that he can to be a part of that prestige to lift himself up and so what happens though is after a while, if he doesn't feel like he's satisfying her needs, he will cheat or he will try to humble her in a certain kind of way to bring her down to his level and his status so he doesn't feel as inadequate. How can you say that Beyonce is not Jay-Z's top pick? So is. Y'all have never seen him know that they're married with anybody else. It's alleged rumors that he cheated, but it's allegedly. And then the guy who stitched her video was like, there's five different types of categories that categorize how men feel about women. No, that's not true. Everybody is a different person, a different feel, a different everything. So if the man is not feeling you, it's not because you're fit or because you're ugly or because he just wants to hook up or because he just wants money. It's the kind of man he is. It's just the kind of man. It's not you, honey. It's just the kind of man he is. What a polite way to say that Beyonce was more attracted to Jay-Z when she was 18 he was 30 because she was moldable and because she was impressionable. What a polite way to say that groomers are more attracted 
to younger people because they can make them into what they want them to be. What a polite way to say that once she stepped into her own and became Queen B, he became less interested. What a nice way to say that having a fully realized, fully accepted, fully evolved woman as your wife is not as attractive as having someone young and impressionable to you who will listen to everything you say and dote on your every word and worship you like a king. What a nice way to say that Jay-Z's ego was never equipped to be with Beyonce. Um, um white girl, I agree 100%. Y'all can finish listening to it towards this, but I agree a hundred percent. I never really thought that, like, for real, for real, Mr. Carter really, really liked her. I felt like at the end of the day, you know, Miss Hit 'em Up Style was technically supposed to have been in that mix. Then I thought, of course, it was about the princess in the sky, you know, Aaliyah. Like, I, to be honest, I'm right there with you because I never really thought Mr. Carter really liked her. I just felt like he knew, uh, why not? Oh my God, y'all gotta go watch the full video for context, but. A lot of men do this. She's not saying that Beyonce is not Jay-Z's type as in she's not attractive, but basically Jay-Z likes a different type of woman, but Beyonce fits the image of who he feels like he should be dating as a music exec executive. Y'all don't know how many men I know personally who have missed out on the love of their life because she didn't fit the image of what society deems beautiful or attractive or the type of woman that they should have. Have you ever seen a group of men and all of their girlfriends look alike? Because a lot of time the alpha male in that friend group sets the tone of the type of woman that's acceptable amongst the group. Beauty truly is subjective. Men are really attracted to all types of women. They find beauty in all types of women. But due to society, and it's really the society that they've created, they're not able to express that freely because they're afraid that the type of woman that they choose won't be accepted amongst men. Okay? What's your woman if everybody doesn't look at her and want her? No, I don't think a lot of y'all remember uh, when they got together and who that man was with before. She was his dream girl. You know why? Because she was a girl and he was a grown ass man. Men like him want little girls that they can groom and manipulate. There is no dream woman whatever for men like them they just want to keep fucking grooming and taking advantage of uh fucking um young girls point blank so she goes on to say that she feels like jay-z's dream girl are the women that he cheats with like that's his type I think women need to wake up to the fact that a lot of men, especially men who came from nothing, don't have a dream girl, okay? They didn't dream of a wife. They didn't dream of marriage. I don't think Jay-Z has a dream girl. I definitely don't think that the women that he cheats with are his dream girl. Like, I don't think that, or even his type. I don't think he necessarily has. He might have a type that turns him on, but... That would be the most you would even say to that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all have to understand that a lot of men, especially these men who cheat around with good women, they don't respect women. Like, none of them. <laughs> like, none of them. Type or not, no type. You know what I'm saying? Like, he... He came from the hood. Like, he wasn't dreaming of, of girls, of wives, of marriage and rings and, and, and cook dinner. He was, you know, dreaming of money, success, power, control. And that's what women are for him. <laughs> Yo, you gotta love how everybody's like a relationship expert and a psychologist all of a sudden. Listen, of course Beyonce is Jay-Z's dream girl, which is why he put a ring on it and she's no longer a single lady. I mean, what do you think that Jay-Z is over there dreaming about? Some chick who's standing on Fulton Ave at the bus stop with an asymmetric bob, some door knockers, a Ralph Lauren puffy coat, some express bootcut jeans with some Reebok 5411s rocking like a coach bag? <laughs> no.
And what everybody on the internet needs to stop doing is looking at life through a 2024 perspective. If you go back to 1996, Jay-Z was a fraggle rock looking dude. Source, can you please pull up a picture of Jay-Z when he was in high school? <laughs> Listen, Jay-Z wasn't out there pulling dime bags. He was pulling nickels and pennies at best. Now, with that being said, when he met Beyonce, they were on the same level as celebrity and he was sweating her because Jay-Z dropped his first album in 2006 and Destiny's Child dropped in 2007. So it's not like he was this big star compared to Beyonce. All right, so somewhere along the lines, they start doing music together. They start doing the Bonnie and Clyde thing and guess what? They both sort of play. We're better together than we are individually. And if we link up, we can make a whole lot of something out of nothing. So what you got is two people with common goals who actually have love for each other who decided a long time ago that if we link up into a partnership like Voltron, we can make all of these dreams come true. So I know somebody's going to come in the comment section and be like, but Sauce, if Beyonce is Jay-Z's dream girl, then why did he cheat? He cheated because he's a mediocre looking dude who now has a billion dollars in a bank account and because he wanted to and he could. And I know you're like, but Sauce, she's the dream. No, she's your dream. For him, she's a reality, which includes holitosis in the morning, funky underarms at night, chin hairs that need to be tweezed, and corns when at least three out of five of them toast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it is what it is. And a type of dude that's going to cheat on you is going to cheat on you whether you're the dream girl or not. I mean, Jermaine Dupree cheated on Janet Jackson. Eric Benet was knocking Haley Berry upside the noggin. P. Diddy was ready to let J-Lo take the fall for the gun rap. And Chris Brown gave Rihanna the two-piece. I mean, dudes are dudes, especially grimy dudes. And no matter who you are, I don't care how cute you are, the dream girl eventually becomes the reality girl. And I hate to hit you with this little piece of reality, but sometimes the side chick doesn't have to be better. She just has to be different. Listen, you done seen some of these side pieces. The wife is over there and she's a 10. And then you see the side piece and she's like a negative two. <laughs> <laughs> different. And on top of that, I don't care how many billions of dollars that Jay-Z makes, there's still a part of him that's still going to be that little boy who couldn't get any burn because his parents were sending him to school with the sheer church socks and the penny loafers with the ruffles. Source, can you please zoom in to the penny loafers with the ruffles? <laughs> Yeah, Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce because he had a flashback of those ruffle front loafers and he needed somebody to stroke his ego. <laughs> but really quick, let me get serious for a minute because before we go, I want to say rest in peace to Boss, aka Lachelle Law, who passed away the other day. Boss was the first female rapper signed to Def Jam and she was one of the first people to come out doing that gangster rap. And I mean, boy, did she do it. I remember when she first dropped Deeper and Deeper. I mean, I was like, oh my goodness, it's like the female NWA. And I went to the store and I bought the cassette single because I couldn't afford the whole tape. <laughs> But I mean, I replayed that cassette tape over and over again because Boss was just that dope. And her contributions to hip hop will never be forgotten. So rest in peace, Boss, aka Lachelle Law. Listen, let me know what you think about the YouTuber saying that Beyonce is not Jay Z's dream girl, West Virginia shutting down the Crown Act, Beyonce trying to sell you Adidas cowboy hats, Kanye calling out Adidas because he says they're the ones that are immoral, and Soldier Boy saying that he's the reason why the government wants to ban TikTok. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celebrity news. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Peace.